Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, this is Alex, and uh, we're doing our show a little different way tonight. We're using a different uh, system to do it with, so we'll see how it turns out. Uh, but uh, we'll uh, be talking to our citizens panel in just a little bit. But first, we got to go out and talk to a friend of ours. Well, everybody... It's time once again as we go out to the other coast of the United States and check in with the musical renderings of Larry <laughs> Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. The bird, the bird man of Alcatraz. Yeah, last here, yeah. time we were talking to you, which uh, was a week ago in uh, radio time, but just minutes ago in when we're sitting down and recording this shit time, uh, you said that you like feeding crows. That sounds like the name of a rock group, feeding crows. <laughs> yes, it was uh, counting crows, I think. Yeah, uh, but feeding crows, uh, and uh, you said you like them because they're particularly intelligent. I did not know that about. Yes, them. I read they're very intelligent. They uh, and they they know me, and then I read they uh, they recognize it's facial recognition. They have, they're very keen on that. So I, I, I just went out, I got a, uh, an iPhone X, and I look at it, and it recognizes me, okay, mm -hmm. without any hesitation. It's just, oh, it's you, okay, I'm, I'm on now. So what they probably did was they crossed a crow with an iPhone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they got the facial recognition. No big problem, right? There you go. There you go. So what's new in your life, Larry? Uh, let's see. Nothing dreadfully exciting. Uh, I did find, uh, we did this before. I found, I got my old annual here with the entertainment personalities of the past. Yes. Oh, you're you gonna, want me to run a couple of names by you again? Oh, uh, uh, you're going to run a couple of names by me. Well, let's see. Uh, you know, my brain is not as good as it used to be. I don't know who the governor of New York is. But go ahead. Okay, well. Uh, oh my gosh, you almost lived to be a hundred. Shirley Booth, which I, I remember from Hazel. Well, Hazel. But she also was uh, the star of the movie and I believe the Broadway show of Come Back Little Sheba. Yes, and I read that was her first movie and she won an Oscar for her very yes, first movie. Yes. And that, uh, sometimes people win Oscars and they go on to do shitty stuff. You ever mm -hmm. notice that? They win the Oscar, and that's it, yeah. Um, uh, who's that black actress who wound up doing Catwoman? Uh, Halle Berry. Halle Berry. She wins the Academy Award. The next thing she does is just a terrible, terrible movie. You know, they decide to cash in rather than to, hey, embellish their reputation. And so now she'll do anything, man. She'll show up for a fucking bar mitzvah. <laughs> really? Yeah. That bad? <laughs> so Shirley Booth went on to do Hazel, and that was pretty much it. I mean, her career, I mean, there were other, some movies she did, but no, she didn't have a greater career after Come Back to Little Sheba, you know? Mm -hmm. But anyway. That's okay. the only thing I remember for a Little Sheba and... Yeah. Uh, and nobody Hazel. knows who we're talking about, by the way. That's what a afterthought Shirley Booth is. I mean, most people my age would remember her. Most people kind of your age would remember, but, you know, under 50, who's, who's yeah. Shirley Booth? That's, that's how fleeting fame is. You know? It really is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I only remember this guy because he did commercials about not smoking because he was dying. Yule Brenner. Well, of course I know Yule Brenner. I mean, he, Magnificent but Seven. But what did he do? <laughs> Ma Magnificent Seven, King and I. Uh, he did a lot of stuff. Yeah. No, he was on Broadway in The King and I, and then he did the movie, and uh, then he did The Magnificent Seven. He did Westworld. He was a, he was the star of Westworld. Um, somehow he was like an Asian, uh, and he was like uh, from I don't know some place in Asia, like you know some far off mountainous region or whatever. And he used to run around. I understand 
he made his living playing what they call gypsy guitar. And also in the guitar he would have drugs and he would sell them. That's how he made his living in the early years. But he wound up basically playing cowboys. And how you go from, how you even envision Yule Brynner as a cowboy is beyond me, but they put him in the Magnificent Seven, and from then on, anytime he wanted to play a cowboy, he was your man. He was the go to mm -hmm. guy. Okay. Well, you, nothing rough okay. here yet. Nothing rough here yet. Nothing rough here, and this is this one is not rough at all. But I'm just he he died. At, oh my God, he died at uh, six. There's so many guys that have died much younger than us. Uh, John Cassavetes. John Cassavetes, yeah, uh, uh, actor. Of course, he was in uh, uh, what do you call it? the the one with the devil, uh, Rosemary's Baby. Uh, he was in Rosemary's Baby, and he did a lot of other films. And then he became a very good director of. of He's a good director, right? Of his own, he had of his, some interesting stuff. Of his own independent films, and I interviewed him years ago. Uh, at this, he was in the room with me. Uh, uh, he, I interviewed him for a film he did, called the Oh God. Oh, I can't remember the name of it now. But it, he, he had two of his friends in it as well, and they were in the studio with him, and that was uh, Ben Gazzara and Peter Falk. Oh, hus uh, not husbands? Husbands, husbands. That's what he was on for, yeah. Hus 1970. Husbands, yeah. yeah. He, had a, he had a sinister look. I don't know, maybe it was, he maybe just looked, looked kind of scary, I thought. Yeah, he played bad guys on a lot of occasions. Uh... He, uh, but he, he was a, he was a good actor. He was a very good actor, but he was an yeah. even, even more inventive director. I mean, he did these very simple films, and people loved them, you know. Um, and I, I remember that was the first time I ever met Peter Falk. And uh, somebody in another room was doing an interview with some prostitutes or something. And um, Falk is going. Hey, there are hookers in the other room. <laughs> I remember that was the interview where I said to him, I said, um, uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think about violence in movies? And he says, I hate violence in movies. There's no place in movies for violence. I said, but you made your first big hit, and I think he won an Oscar for playing Abe Rellis of Murder Incorporated. And he said, yeah, but I was acting. <laughs> and then years later, I met up with him again at uh, Sirius XM, and we had the nicest time together. He just loved me because I knew things about his career he figured nobody else cared about. Mm -hmm. You know, like my favorite movie with him in it is Tune In Tomorrow, which you probably never have even seen. Never heard of with no. Keanu Reeves, and it's all about it's all about this guy who writes radio plays in the late forties. And any town he works in, the radio stations get burned down by angry mobs. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and you find out when you, when you watch the move, as the movie goes on, he goes to another town and you find out why. You know. Oh, that's one of my favorite phrases is angry mobs. <laughs> yeah, the tune in tomorrow. Uh, Peter Falk, Keanu Reeves, Barbara Hershey, uh... And uh, he, um, he, he has one saying in it that I absolutely love. And I wonder, do I have it here? And I don't know if you'll be able to hear it when I play it because, uh, but yeah, this is, uh, oh, wait a minute, this is it. And uh, you probably won't hear it. The, the uh, problem is that this thing doesn't play that way. But here's the quote, and then I'll, I'll say it to you if you don't hear it. Did you hear that? Life is a shit storm. And when it's raining shit, the best umbrella you can buy is art. <laughs> How's that? That's a good line. <laughs> it's a great line. Did you did you hear it at all? You didn't hear it, did you? No, I didn't hear it. But it's a great line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, that that's my uh, yeah, and we only had it on one channel, folks, so I'm sorry about that. 
uh, and out of that same mo m movie is his term moose poop. Uh, it's it just it's a great movie, and I mentioned that movie to him, and he said that he loved that film, you know, uh, and uh, uh, it's it's it literally one of my one of my it's my it's my favorite Falk film. That and uh, the uh, the uh, in laws, uh, which is another classic, you know. And uh, you got, if nothing else, how about Columbo? Well, Columbo, yeah, but I was never a big fan of Columbo. No, I love it. Yeah, I mean, I've I, I I've seen some of the episodes because they play locally on one of these revival stations. But um, I was never a big fan of that. But I was a big fan of Falks. I mean, I just I loved what he did, and I, and and things like Tune In Tomorrow and The In Laws. He was just brilliant, just brilliant. Um, also, I loved him in a film uh, called The Great Race with Jack Lemmon, which is basically a huge cartoon. And uh, right, that that was funny. Yeah, he plays the assistant, and he's just to Jack Lemmon, who's the bad guy. And it, it, he just he's a, he was a wonderful comedic actor. Well, anyway, I mentioned all these films of his that I loved, and they were the same ones he loved. They were the ones he wished lived after him, you know? Uh, so that had to be a great interview. Oh, he a lovely person. God, I loved him. He was so wonderful. And we got along so well. And then he died a short time after that, you know? Uh, uh, and I think a lot of people will remember Peter Falk because Columbo keeps getting shown. You it know. does. You just make, you got to make sure it's the ones in the seventies. Yeah. They re they did him in the nineties, and those suck. But they, the there's no uh, there's no all Hazel channel. All <laughs> Hazel. <laughs> you know, so you, you you don't remember Shirley Booth, but uh, Peter Falk will be remembered for a while. I think there's a point at which they're no longer remembered. I mean, there were people who were the biggest stars in the world, okay, that if you mention them today, anybody under 50 doesn't even know who they are. For instance, let me give you, who was the, who was the biggest star uh, in the 40s? I think it was the 40s, yeah. Worldwide. Uh, might have been, uh, I know late, uh, for a while it was Mickey Rooney. That's it. Biggest star in the world. How many people over 50 do you think know who Mickey Rooney is? No one. Exactly. Uh, and when I was told that he was the biggest star at, at that time, I didn't believe it. Um, you know, but it was, um, uh, it, it, so people who are big stars, I mean, if I marry, m mention, I'll mention some names too. Fida Bera. Uh, and I believe she was silent film. Yep. Biggest star in silent films. One of the biggest stars ever. But, you know, once they're no longer stars, Clara Bow, okay, who absolutely, well, I get a hard on when I watch Clara Bow. I mean, there's something very sexy about Clara Bow. But she, her career was, God, I, I think she made it when she was still a teenager and her career was finished at 24, something like that. But at the time that she was big, she was the biggest star in the world. Well, if you've got that kind of fame and lose it, that must be so depressing. Well, she didn't like fame that much. It scared her. She was a, the, and then sound came in. Here was the problem. Sound came in, and actually, she had a good voice. There was she. She was. It wasn't her voice. It was her fear of sound. She was literally known for doing a sound film once, and then going up to the microphone and hitting it with her fists. Wow! Because she couldn't. She just sound just scared her so much, and she made a couple of really good sound films, but she. And she she had a problem with it, and then she was let go by her studio, and then she was brought back by 20th Century Fox. Made a couple of pictures that were really quite good, and then she just gave up and went to Arizona and married her cowboy husband, uh, her boyfriend, uh, 
I'm trying to remember what his name was, but he ran for, I think it was either senator or governor of the state, and he was in politics. So she just kind of gave up and just was, uh, was a housewife, raised kids, you know, all of that. Well, some people don't like that. I think it was Carrie Snodgrass that had a couple of huge films, the first two films, and then she kind of just quit. Yeah. Well, the thing with Bo was eventually she wound up, I think, in New York living in kind of a hovel. You know? I mean, this was one of the, was the most fa This was the It Girl. They named her the It Girl because they, there was an, uh, uh, a woman who wrote a book called It, meaning you have it, mm -hmm. that thing, you know, it was, it was all about sex and se sex, being a sex symbol and so on. So she, they got her to do the movie It, so she became known as the It Girl. Um, but no bigger star in her time than Clara Bow. And today, some people might know the no. name because it sounds silly, you know. That was her real name, by the way. So. Good name. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, Dana Carvey did a sitcom when he first started out with uh, Mickey Rooney, and he, he said Mickey Rooney would walk around the set going, 1939, biggest star in the world. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I t I've, I've told this story before. Uh, uh, I had a very wonderful producer named Christy Frazier, as you may remember. Uh, who was a goddess, yes. And still, was, and still is. In fact, we're going to see them in a couple of months upstate. But anyway, uh, um, uh, Christy, um, uh, we were doing the show in Hollywood at the ABC studios. And a couple of nights earlier, I had been watching the Joan Rivers show. Remember when she had a show on Fox? Yeah, uh, and I won the Chris Carson off. It was, a, it turned out to be a disaster. But I watched her that night, and I was never a big fan of her in those days. But I watched her that night, and she had Mickey Rooney on. And Mickey Rooney came on the show and literally hijacked it, you know? <laughs> Started telling all his stories, you know? Uh, if I just gotten to Judy Garland in time, she'd be alive today, you know? That, that kind of story. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, he's plugging his, 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 all, all his little projects and his, like, I know, 18-year-old girlfriend who he brings on with him. I mean, just a disaster. And I sat there watching this feeling so very sorry for Joan <laughs> Rivers. I just, my heart went out to Joan Rivers that, you know, how do you get out of this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, how she got out of it was time ran out. Lucky her, she only had an hour TV show. <laughs> now I'm, I'm doing the show in, the, in L.A., and I'm in the studio, and I'm doing the, I got uh, Bob Rubin in there and some other people. And all of a sudden I look at the control booth and the control room, and there is Mickey Rooney. And he's talking to Christy. And I went, Christy, do not make the biggest mistake of your producing career. And the next thing I know, the doors open and here comes Mickey Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I, I gotta tell you, it was just an absolute it was absolute torture for me, you know, because he came in and he just hijacks the room. And uh, I remember at that point, Reuben was sitting on a couch in back of Mickey Rooney with his head kind of just showing right over Mickey Rooney's shoulder. And as it's going on, he keeps giving me these looks like, oh, my fucking God. <laughs> It literally, I mean, I don't have a copy of it, I don't think, anywhere. It was the worst interview I've ever done because I couldn't do an interview. You I'd love to hear that. You could not, you know. <laughs> the only person that came close to that, and I was told never interview him, and I made the mistake and said, sure, I'll do it. I'd forgotten the advice, was Steve Allen. Because Steve Allen automatically would hijack an interview, completely hijack it, because he used to be a host on a TV show, right? Mm -hmm. So he knows how to be a host. 
So he takes over the job of being the host when he's a guest. And it was just, it was horrendous. That was in, that was in San Francisco. So those, those were people that, you know, quite frankly, I wish I had never interviewed, all right? But I did, and I'll have to live with it. Okay, <laughs> give, give me a couple of more names while we got time. Okay, uh, uh, I think he was a comedic actor. He died very young, 50, God, he died at uh, 50, Jack Carson. Jack Carson, well, I know Jack Carson. I, I, I'm trying to tell you movies he was in, uh, but I can't, I can't tell you. I mean, I know Jack Carson, and he was always a, it was always, he was always a with guy, you know, it, it was, and sometimes he would have a starring, he would be, have star billing, but for the most part, he was, he was just, you know, he's everybody's best friend in movies, and a wise guy. Oh, uh, but not a big star. Uh, he was a name, okay, you know. And uh, studios had him signed to them, and he was, you know, if I were, if you were to ask me what was good about him, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, nothing memorable. Well, uh, he, he was a true movie star in that, by force of personality, he did okay. You know, people want, wanted to see his movies by, just to see Jack Carson, not to see him play a character, but Jack Carson. Anyway, another name. Victor Bono. Victor Bono, big fat guy, gay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, um, uh, what was it? Come back. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, the one with uh, Joan Crawford and Betty Davis. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, scary as hell, that one. Uh, uh, whatever happened to Baby Jane? Baby Jane, yeah. He died yeah. at 44. And Victor Bono also wound up on uh, Batman playing King Tut. Right, right. Uh, and he did a lot of other stuff. I mean, he was around. Uh, and it, just recently, when they did the history, you know, this movie about the making of comeback uh, of of uh, whatever happened to Baby Jane, about Joan Crawford, about Betty Davis, Bono is portrayed as being gay. Yeah, so he was quite gay. Okay, and. Uh a very interesting career. Died at 46, Montgomery Clift. Well, yeah, he uh, also gay. Um, again, no... Yeah, one. that's very common in the movies. Yeah, yeah but closeted. <laughs> closeted gay. You know, no question about it. Closeted. Uh, but he was, uh, um, um, uh, you know, he was a very big actor at the time. He, he was considered one of those very accomplished actors. Right, good, like a tortured life, though, right? Yeah, I think he was in Suddenly Last Summer with Elizabeth Taylor. Uh, he was in Elizabeth Taylor's last film. Uh, not Elizabeth Taylor's last film. He was in Marilyn Monroe's last film, which was uh, The Misfits. Uh, oh, one of my favorite movies, it, yeah. And it was the next to last film for Montgomery Clift. He died a short time after that. And also Clark, the last film for Clark Gable. Last film for Clark Gable, yeah. So, you know. Um, uh, the only guy who survived that film was Eli Wallach. Who <laughs> went on to be almost a hundred. Yeah, I interviewed him when he was in his nineties, and uh, a really nice guy, really nice guy. Okay. Very historic. Yeah. And I want. Oh, I want to because you're the film. Uh, I because my dad dial up. I couldn't download the damn thing about. Uh, there's something about. Stanley Kubrick, there's, they found some interview where it, it kind of explains the last 15 minutes of 2001. No. Have you seen that? Yeah. No. Well, we'll Google that because I, I, can't, I can't spend a half an hour to download it, but uh, <laughs> they, found some in, they found some interview where he uh, it kind of explains what the last 20 minutes of 2001 means. I can download that same thing in like three seconds. I know. Yeah. One of these days, we're get you know before you die. We well, when you when you get out here, you're gonna be my, you're gonna install me uh, the high speed. <laughs> I've got an iPhone here for you. Everything. Did you ever ask about iPhone? I have. I'm trying to get hold of Larry Stahl. Oh, okay, so you'll take forever on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I got to admit, one of my biggest laughs uh, when I get on stage, if I just pull out my flip phone, people go hysterical. 
Why, why, why do you like that flip phone? It's a good, it's a, actually, it's a good phone. Yeah. And I've li I'm starting to text now, but it takes, you know, you got to hit the thing three times to get one letter. <laughs> oh, God damn. So how old is the phone? The phone's like 12 years old. Oh, jeez, oh, my God. Yeah, the most I've ever gone with a phone is like, you know, well, oh, three years. That's it. And then I got a new one. Yeah, yeah so. Anyway. Well, hey, you always were Mr. Tech, so. We've run out of time. And these were these were fun today. I like these. This is, of course, it's always fun with you, Larry. I like yeah. talking to you. Well, I thought the last couple I was pretty boring, so I felt bad. And I was okay. no, you're never boring, Larry. Yes. I enjoy conversation with you. It's the one thing I look forward to in life. That and my numb feet. Yeah, well, you're you're one of the few smart people I still know. So I always love talking to you. And now I have to walk down to the gym, which will be pain painful for me because my shoes hurt. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen. Say goodbye, Larry. Bye-bye. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. And hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, I hope I'm sounding okay. Somebody says we have a little bit of an echo tonight, uh, but uh, who knows? Who knows? Anyway. Uh, we are using a newer system here, and uh, uh, I, I turned something off here, and that may have stopped the echo from happening. I don't know. I, I give up. Um, uh, I'm trying a new thing. It's called XSplit, and I'm using it to make the show work, okay? And if it starts screwing up, I'll just stop the show and start it all, you know, start it all over again, okay? Oops. That's not what I wanted to do. Here we go. Op open up, will you? Here we go. Okay. So I got to learn how to operate all this. I'm going to open up the Skype lines, and now we're going to hope this works, okay? Because this is a whole different deal. And uh, I'm, I'm looking. I'm, my CPU usage is just fine. Uh, this eats up a little more what we call CPU. Hold on a sec. Ah, I'm not going to put on my shirt. What the hell? I'll stay in the t-shirt because it's a little warm in here tonight. Very humid in New York at the present time. Anyway, I've got the uh, the Skype going. See, uh, we have the we have the uh, Skype uh, the Skype picture here. Hold on a second. See, but it's going to look like that until somebody decides to call. So, uh, and that that should be you actually. Um, oh, and here comes Phil Meyer. Let's see. Okay, now let's see if it works. Here we go. Uh, there we are. Look, it worked. Yeah. Yeah, it worked. Uh, I'm using the old, the old mixer. Uh, are you sure you're going through your uh, main microphone and not the one on your camera? Uh, not the one on my camera. Oh, uh, now it sounds like your main microphone. Wait a minute. Where were you listening? Uh, I was listening on uh, the feed from Gabnet. Okay, we'll listen to the feed from Gabnet now. Do I sound like I'm coming through a speaker? I can't, and I because uh, I got you on Skype. Because my uh, if I go to uh, the audio here and see where it's the audio's coming in from, the audio's coming in from the uh, a high definition device and not uh, anything else. So. There we go. Yeah. Uh, uh, microphone, high definition uh, in. No, it, uh, we're, we seem to be fine. Okay. Uh, no, no. It sounds sounds okay now. Are you listening on the air, too, to see? No. Well, t take a listen to the air and tell me. Uh, if I do that, then I'll uh, m mess up the signal. Uh, well, that could be, too. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, It sounds fine. It does sound fine. Let me see yeah. here. Working fine. No more echo sound. Okay, I got I got rid of it by uh, I think by closing something down. This is a whole new system I'm using here, so I Good. I don't Good. know fully how it works. Well, you um, know, you got to get your sixty dollars worth. Yeah, let me get rid of that. Okay, all righty. 
Uh, let me see here. We had a little flashing up at the top of the screen. That's a problem that they have that I can't do anything about. Uh -oh, and the GPU is using up way too much power. Oh boy, this is this is kind of ridiculous. Uh, I don't know. I may have to shut down the video. You know, stay where you are. Uh, shut yeah. down the video and uh, start up uh, using my old system. Uh, yeah, it, 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 GPU is like going nuts here. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm using the my old mixer. I sent the other one back to the guy I bought it from. Yeah, and uh, I tried to order a new one today uh, from Adorama, mm -hmm. and uh, when I go on their website, I have an Adorama credit card. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I wanted to use it because you get 12 months no interest. Yeah. And so uh, uh, it's not showing up on the uh, on the thing, so uh, on the Adorama site. So now they they had a I called them. They ex escalated me to a manager. It'll take two days. <laughs> it's a good thing this thing still works. Well, you got the old one working, right? Right. Yeah. No, yeah. oh, that's good. Yeah. Anyway, so I don't understand. All my I'm using up full GPU here. I I don't get that, but my CPU is fine. Eh, I give up. Yeah. Uh, I, this new system is not working like I want it to, but we'll keep doing the show till it peters out, and then when it peters out, I'll just uh, stop and we'll go to the other one. You know. But did they have some uh, some help? Weren't you able to contact somebody on this uh, on this new one? Yeah. Well, I can, but uh, I just don't understand. It says I'm at 99% GPU. That's my graphics processing unit. Okay? Yeah. But it doesn't seem to saying 100. And it doesn't seem to be stopping, and the picture's going out fine, and, you know, yeah. so uh, now all we need are some other people here. And also, I'm able to frame the picture better, uh, as people can look on the screen, and I even yeah. have a drop shadow behind me, uh, behind my little screen. Well, let me, let me turn the audio down, and I'll look at it on yeah. uh, my phone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, See what your thing looks like. Yeah. Um, now it's normal. Yeah. Okay. I, I solved the problem. I, whatever, yeah. Whatever the problem was. <laughs> it's, it's solved now. Yeah. Yeah. But All right. uh, this is this is eating up way too much. Well, it isn't using up a lot, a lot of CPU power. So, you know. Yeah. All right. But, you know, I did, I did have to. I was sending it out also on Facebook at the same time, and I had to stop that because it was just eating up power like crazy. So I stopped that. At the oh. very beginning. So. Would have been and nice if I could do it on both, you know. But uh, yeah, well, I, weren't you able to do it on both with the OBS? Uh, 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 no, no, can't. No. Uh, here I can. So, here I could. If I had the power, if the machine had the power, I could do two or three different feeds at the same time. Ah, uh, but uh, uh, you know, so I I don't, I don't understand. Uh, I don't understand what 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 this is. Highest load for X split. Uh, related processes, highest load across GPU engines. Okay, well, I'm at 99%, but that means I'm I'm still going out fine. And we're yeah. waiting for other people to call so I can well, fill this screen up here and see how know, it works. The, uh, the feed looks great. Yeah, the feed know. is uh, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it's really high definition and... yeah. And if you you know if you look at my camera for instance if you look at yeah look at that see and uh, if you if you look at my camera um, you know I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm looking I'm looking great too you know yeah the, yeah the high it's depth. a smaller picture well no no but uh, in a moment uh, you'll you'll get it it's coming up uh, I just switched to my camera so people oh, could see okay. it and um, uh, it uh, it looks. Uh, looks really uh, really good and uh, there you're holding up again yeah uh, and well, it's there, there see there's me now see yeah now uh, i see so i can yeah i'll go back to you there we go uh That's here we go good. we'll add uh, jeff stein to the call uh and uh here we go hello hello jeff hey. there we go there's I'm jeff on. there he is um yeah this is looking good this actually looks good. I and, and that lowered 
first time, a short time, lowered my graphics processing unit. So more people call, and we can lower the graphics processing unit. <laughs> I guess it was because you were taking up the full screen or just said, hey, that guy's so ugly. This is a major load for us. Yeah, really? Yeah. But anyway, no, what it is is that I'm trying this new thing because it's it's one that may work with the with the new Skype. And uh, I just want to see if I can if I can make it work and it, it works smoothly, fine. The picture looks better than we ever had with OBS, however. You know, the I'm looking at Jeff on the Skype and yeah. I'm looking at him on my phone on the on the feed. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the phone feed is so clear, yeah. uh, so high def. It's it's better than Skype, and I have I have a really good monitor. Yeah, well, this is all Skype we're doing here. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm uh, enjoying the the warm weather, except it's raining all day long. Yeah, yeah I heard so I, I heard the East Coast is uh, getting uh, flooded, and the West Coast is burning. And it's humid. Yeah. It's humid here yeah. right now. It's it, humid. It's rainy it's uh i mean it's 72 degrees but all day long but uh it's not fun wow. and uh, we were going to go up to maine and uh, we talked to our lobster fisherman up there who picks us up mm -hmm. and he goes don't come he says it's so bad <laughs> out here he yeah. says we won't even let you out there okay more people call come on more people need more people more people yeah, right. somebody else yeah I want to I want to see what happens when we start filling up the screen a little bit here but as yeah. you can see I have it masked off very nicely now and it's uh, the, the thing actually presents a better a better overall presentation yeah so uh, what what would you need in the computer to be able to uh, I would need a new computer with a higher uh, central processing unit a more powerful processing unit well with a little mini mac uh no. have enough because it's no because yeah. i need a pc to do this oh. yeah uh it, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter you know uh we're fine now we're 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 doing just Phil's now. picture is much cleaner than yours i don't know why the mine yeah well, that's right, because I have a cheaper doesn't camera. Doesn't matter because nobody <laughs> sees the well. The picture that you see is not my best camera. Uh, the picture that oh, everybody you're else about is the uh, uh, on Skype. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, so yeah. But anyway, on uh, the, the signal that you're putting out, it's funny. Phenomenal. Whenever, whenever we went, ever, whenever we talk tech on any level, yeah we start to get listeners. I don't know why. When I say, and I've got this problem with this new piece of equipment that I bought and blah, 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 and it goes, and, and, and the numbers go up. Mm. Go figure. Yeah, I, I just don't see how the numbers change like that. It's not like people are fooling around going on yeah. a, down and up and down the dial. You know, it's like somebody tunes in, uh, you know, it's, they're there for a while. So anyway, so you know my latest medical problem? Uh, uh, feet. Well, the feet is uh, still there. Uh, yeah. And and I got the back problem, uh, yeah. the back ache. Yeah. Uh, but now I've got a carbuncle. What's that? You know what those are? They're, like, they're not like boils. They're like a bunch of little boils all in a circle. Oh, uh, could that be... Um what is it that's the uh, disease du jour now? No, uh, a streptococcal infection it could be, but it, I, no, it's probably no, not. It's, it's, just, it's, got, it's got to do with chicken pox. Uh, uh, um, they call it. it, it uh, adults get it. Oh, uh, you, oh no, you're talking, you know, no, no, this is not shingles. Shingles, that's it. I've had my shingles shot, so I don't know. Yeah, but sometimes shingles. shingles looks like that, where you got little no, bumps no, no, within no. a... I, I, I have shingles. Yeah. I had it my by my eye. I almost lost my eyesight. Wow. Yeah. I, I the shingles. When I always heard about shingles, I always thought it was like something you got in your ass. Doesn't that sound like something you get in your ass? Get everything in your ass. You know, ask, ask that guy that calls the show, Brian. Oh, uh, <laughs> Brian. Oh, what? Brian. He everything he says is in his ass. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. Yeah, I thought yeah. you were mentioning Steve last night. It was really a, a, a call that made me very happy. I'm <laughs> sure it did. <laughs> really? 
You know, uh, it, I haven't it, talked it in was, a long time, well, Alex. Here's what's been wrong with me, and here's who's died since I talked to you last. Yeah, it was uplifting. You know, he's a nice guy. Well, he's a very I, I like nice him, guy. but it, it's kind of like watching paint dry, and uh, it was painful. Yeah. And then we had uh, pictures from Manila last yeah. night, which was nice. You know, if on you a go, Russian if phone. If you go on vacation, take your phone out. Well, of course, the trouble is, well, him using that bandwidth, I guess he's using a local phone. I guess yeah. that's why he's using that Russian Alcatel or whatever. No, I, he he has that. That's his phone. And uh, and I asked him, I said, uh, are the buttons in Russian? You know, because Russian alphabet's different. Than, and he says, yes. Uh, so the instructions, the buttons, everything, Russian. Well, yeah, but uh, I'm just wondering what happens like when you go overseas and you use your phone outdoors and you're using airtime. It's well, very yeah. expensive. I mean, like roaming, yeah. Roaming unless, is very unless expensive. Unless you get a card. What? You know, you can get a no, but you, you get, get a, a card, but still, you 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 can buy ahead of time before you go, and yeah. you get a certain amount of minute. But you don't get a lot of bandwidth for that. You know, it eats it up like crazy if you use it outside. Thank God for Wi-Fi, because most hotels you go into or restaurants you go into mm -hmm. in Europe have Wi-Fi, and you yeah. use that. So when I'm in Europe, I turn off <coughs> my cellular. And if I can use the Wi-Fi, I use the Wi-Fi. And now there's a thing on the newest iPhone uh, that is uh, calling, uh, using, making calls through Wi-Fi. Yeah. Where you don't have to do it through cellular. Yeah. So you can use your Wi-Fi system to call. And, it's like uh, it's over IP. So I imagine, you know, if you're in Europe, I mean, a good way of using it also is use Skype as well. That, that yeah. doesn't cost anything, you know. As long as it still works, I I years ago I I think I went to the Caribbean or some something like that and the uh, the roaming charges uh, I I didn't even make a phone call it my phone updated or or you know something happened and it was like one hundred and eighty dollars worth of charges really yeah and I had to pay it wow and it was some local company that uh took over when the when you got off the plane and uh and it ripped you off for a lot of money okay is anybody else gonna call come on come on i need you to call i want you to call because so, i'm tr testing out this new system tonight and i need to put it to its full through its full paces so jeff uh, tell us uh where are you going to go in italy you have anything planned or oh yeah no it's a interesting plan because we kind of put it together you see i've got four granddaughters uh-huh okay and uh two kids with uh with either their, their husband or the wife or whatever so we're all going with that's that. like 10 people but between you oh and yeah and <laughs> then i also have another son who doesn't have any kids? Uh -huh. He has a. Oh, so you got tw oh, twelve to the to corral. Well, yeah. So I don't know. We we put it together. Wait a minute. Who's paying for this? Ah, oh, that's not allowed to tell you. <laughs> it's Grandpa Jeff. Is it Grandpa <laughs> no, Jeff that's no, no, paying no. for all of this? They're sharing. Let's let's put this. Way. Uh, okay. The, I'm, I'm negotiating better than Trump does <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh anyway it's gonna be pretty good we're, go we're going to rome and yeah. uh, um we're going to uh tuscany and um uh, what's the place where the everything's in the water a uh, venice venice <laughs> where everything's in the water <laughs> venice yeah so yeah. anyway, it'll be kind of fun, and and we really got the hotels organized and uh, getting us picked up at the airport and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's always a company that I've known about mm -hmm. in New York that advertised about going to Italy. Perillo, 
For Raw, yeah. And that's who we called, and they're they're pretty well organized. Yeah, no, they, Italy's what they specialize in. Yeah, so... Wow. Uh, it'll wow. be fun. I think it'll be, be a big kick for the kids. Now, listen, uh, if, from, if, if people from don't... From 10 to it, 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 15. If people don't start calling, I'm going to show pictures of my vacations. Yeah. Uh, and 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 so you want to know what I'm gonna, what shirt I'm gonna wear? Right? E exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that that's that sounds wonderful. I I uh, I worked in Italy a couple of times. Mm -hmm. uh, I represented uh, some furniture lines, and they and in Milan they have a show every year called Salon de Mobile, mm -hmm. and uh, so I worked in the booth, and I spent. You know, a couple weeks uh, in in Italy every year, and it was uh, it, it was it was wonderful. You know, it was in September. It was just before the fashion show, so mm -hmm. things were really yeah. popping. And uh, then I would go around. I I go to uh, Switzerland, or I'd go uh, mm -hmm. you know just just tr uh, travel around. Uh, and one place I really liked was Capri. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how many days you can actually spend there. But it was so beautiful, you know. It was so 1950s. I saw I, it's, well, Beyonce is there on vacation. Oh. I, I don't know how I know that. I know don't know <laughs> I don't know much she of anything like, else. But I know that Beyonce and and her husband um, Kenny G, whoever she's married to, yeah. um, is uh, uh, are vacationing in Capri. Yeah, well, yeah. it's 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 just a beautiful spot. You got those old Fiat 600s with the little canopy tops, and uh, and if you take a, there's only two major cities. One of the major cities, uh, I think it's called Anacapa, and I don't know. But uh, there's these buses, mm -hmm. and the cliffs are maybe a thousand feet, uh -huh. and these buses are within s half an inch of going over the edge of the cliff. I, I also went into the Blue Grotto, and a, and a, and a you know this of, is this is you would think, folks, that this is a very boring conversation, and we would have a better one if more people were to call. Uh, how come when I when I beg, none of the regulars call? You know, uh, I don't know. I, I I know you're getting out. Uh, you know. Yeah, well, I, anyway, I all I'm saying all I'm saying is is the 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 program uh, is is just. Uh, really deathly dull because we're talking about our vacations uh, and there's nothing there's nothing more boring you can talk about and the numbers <laughs> keep climbing well maybe it isn't that boring maybe maybe <laughs> what people want on here is what i've often talked about is it, the only vacation that isn't boring is yours <laughs> <laughs> but, you know <laughs> like slow tv yeah uh, this is a problem i see there's that little uh, uh, when 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 somebody starts talking and that little uh, uh, thing comes up with the screen capture on it, uh, it shows up here on the uh, on the uh, screen. Mean screen capture uh, is yeah. that on the new Skype? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I haven't converted yet. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's on on here. People look up in the upper right hand corner. You can see. Uh, Phil. Oh, oh, oh I see. see that? Yeah, yeah. So there's another little picture of me. Yeah, and I don't know how to do away with that. Uh, but, yeah, you probably have to adjust the size of the picture. No, or something. it's probably something in Skype that I will have to do. Uh, hmm. But uh, it should, uh, you know, it shouldn't. Uh, oops! I just made you full size. Well, that's not good. Uh, it'll be a little while till I see it. I'm still seeing this. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, no, now, now I've got you gone. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I, uh, I'll have to figure that out later. I should put, say, put uh, with, I'm listening while I just changed it. Yeah, put it up, put up with it, folks. Anyway. Uh, Patrick just wrote me. He says he's listening, but he's taking a crap, so it's, uh, it's going to take oh, him a little while to get, uh, oh, oh, okay. Well, when you're through with your crap, Patrick. <laughs> You know, it take them a long time. In though. fact, Skype is on your phone from the toilet. <laughs> you know, we've never had anybody on the can on this program. By the way, well, we, we've got we've got really fairly decent numbers tonight. 
keep talking about your boring That's vacation. Wild. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I'll tell you about the time I went to Corpus Christi, Texas. <laughs> that that's boring you know I, well, one time i'm working in milan mm -hmm. and i decided i needed to lose weight and they yeah. told and somebody said pasta fagioli pasta uh, fagioli yeah yeah, uh, yeah. you you'll uh, is all protein so i ate i'm going to these great restaurants and i'm ordering pasta this fazool. pasta fagioli it's called yeah well yeah. any it's fattening I gained about eight or ten pounds. <laughs> it was. How did you know? Very, uh, huh? How did you know? <laughs> uh, the fold. Uh, See, if you would just lose weight, your arteries won't clog any longer. Just got another listener. God, this is nuts. You, you, you know. But anyway, I, I, the great fear I have about vacation. We haven't taken one in years, so it's time for me to do it. She keeps begging me, and I figure I. I better dig him into the savings and do it. Um, I thought but, you had uh, miles. But, and I have miles, but then I don't have hotels. I don't have rental cars. Take the train. Then I got to buy a ticket on the train. It's going to cost it's money. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Like money. ass pops over here who's taken yeah. his entire family uh, to Europe. How much it's costing <gasps> him. It's the same as a bar mitzvah. And I can't believe he isn't on a fixed income. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. An expense. They all work. Hmm? Yeah. They love money. They all work. They can pay, pay yeah. for this. Stuff. Well, anyway, <laughs> let, uh, we stopped talking about vacations. Keep going. The numbers went down a little bit. Uh, you know. Well, so, Alex, if uh, had you thought about where you wanted to go? Do you want to go someplace different? You're going to go to Australia? You're going to, you know. Spain. We're probably going to go to Spain. Yeah. Uh, probably go to Spain. I, that's, that's one of the better deals, and it's a beautiful spot. You know, it's, it's beautiful. Beautiful country. The only problem is I used to go, of course, Ibiza before yeah. it became trendy, and I loved yeah. it. Just loved it, but I don't want to go back there now because it's just got to be a fucking hellhole. I uh, mean, I don't know. Uh, yes. You ever go to Sardinia? What? Sardinia. It's Why? off the coast of uh, Why? Italy. Why should I? Uh, it's beautiful. It, it's uh, the beaches are gorgeous. It's just relaxing. And there's uh, good places to eat. Uh, I, I was on a cruise ship. Stopped in Sardinia. I had a I had a had a great time. Mm. Well, anyway, um, uh, it it, uh, it was um, I I don't know. I we're probably going to go to Spain. I would imagine, um, mm -hmm. and 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 go down the go down the coast. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, go down uh, uh, to 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 Tamplona, which you probably never heard of Tamplona, but uh, ever, Tamplona? no a Tamplona, which is. That's uh, Women wear when they have well, a period. No, a, a Tamplona, which is every year they have the running of the bull dykes. So <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah. That's one of the oldest jokes I have. I just thought I'd recycle for your in entertainment, <laughs> folks. No one else has heard that before. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, Spain is nice. I, I, love like, I like Spain. I like Ah, here, here comes Chris Ritter. Let's see how Chris... Looks Has Marjorie there. ever been to Barcelona? Uh, 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 no, I don't think she's been to Barcelona. Well, then and that will be a great come, trip. And who is who is this calling? Uh, we have Chris is calling. Hello, Chris. Hello, how are you? Uh, no. Yeah, Chris, uh, turn on your camera. And who's phoning us by telephone? Uh, it's, it's Steve. Steve. Oh, from a different yeah. phone. From a different phone than last night. No, no, same phone. It's just uh, my number is. I got a, um, I got an, another a new number about a month ago, a little more than a month ago. Because I, can't I, believe well, I, I usually rename it yeah. so I know who's there, and so I put in your name, and uh, 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 oh, okay. So now it says Steve on the phone. See, everybody can see that. Uh, yeah, cool. Yeah. I, yeah. I just put you on. I, this is. I think it was the first time I just tested um, watching. I, I, I did the YouTube live. I don't think I ever did that before. It's, it looks good. It's pretty good. Ooh, it looks great, actually. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah it looks really, yeah. really fine. Uh, yeah, it's really it's good. A guy with only 25% vision. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I could hold, yeah, I got the, I yeah. got the phone like, you know, a, a foot away from my eyes. I could, you know, it's, yeah. I, I, I could see, I like the blue, I like the Gabnet, the blue, the, the thing, you know, the, it's a Gabnet Live, the, it's, I like oh. the, it looks good. I mean the lettering at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, yeah, the graphic. Yeah, it's, it's nice. It looks good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you've yeah. got five now. I've got uh, well, five. I've, I've got four. Well, four plus you. Plus me. Let's say hello <laughs> to Mr. Ritter. Hello, Chris. How are you? Good. How are you, Alex? Where are you calling from now? This time. Las Vegas. Las. Oh, you're back in Vegas. Hundred fourteen. I heard. Feels like it. Yeah. yeah. It feels like it. <laughs> no, the yeah. feels P like Palm usually. Spring. Usually they go. Palm it's Springs was one nineteen. Wow. Week, so. Death Valley, mm -hmm. one hundred and twenty three. They, yeah. they Someone don't. Someone just died God. there hiking. Yeah. Yeah, they don't call it Death Valley for nothing. No. You know. uh, what, uh, hmm? what were you going to say? I know that that. No, I know that that that's near. That's in the Los Angeles area. Where is that in proportion to Los Angeles? It's, it's, I guess it's obviously it's south, right? Mm -mm. Uh, it's no, north, it's north, north, northeast of yeah. Los Angeles. Is it? Oh, okay. Of, of Los Angeles. Oh. Yeah. yeah. But okay, it's, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. it is, I think, the lowest point in the United States, mm -hmm. landfall in the United States. I don't know how many feet it is below sea level, but it's, uh, and that's why it gets so hot and it's a big basin and it's, you know. Mm -hmm. It always gets hot there, but 123 is, you know, that's melting plastic time. Yeah, that's that's ridiculous. You know what I always remember, Alex? I love the story about the, the meeting when you had the sponsors when you were at WPLJ and the, the one with the, with the what would you talk with a guy about you who? Well, I told that story a couple of nights ago. I keep recycling that story. Oh, did you? Oh, God. And the guy, you who was, was Yogi Bear, was it? It was with me. Yeah. yeah. And the guy who what the fuck the, is in the, the shit? The guy who, yeah, you remember the story. I loved it. Yeah, that he's in this great. guy's I telling tell me. He's story. telling me I wanted to invent a product that you could bury in the sands of the Sahara Desert for a hundred <laughs> years and it wouldn't spoil. And he said, and that's what you who is. And I just looked at him and said. What's in this shit? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't Rommel uh, bury that stuff in the desert uh, to run his uh, to run his automobile's <laughs> tanks on when he was? I, uh, I have no idea. Uh, oh, that was gasoline. Yeah, yeah. but uh, J we've been joined by James Lee. Hello, James. Oh, James, are you there? I I don't hmm. I don't see him popping up. Hmm. But I'm interested in knowing what's going on in his home state. Yeah, we haven't seen him. Yeah, well, here he comes. Oh, no, he's gone. Uh, well. Oh, there he is. We tried, no, no, oh. no, no, you're looking at the uh, the replay, yeah. which is about a yeah. minute behind or something like that. Yeah. So so it's like 114 degrees in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. So, but everything's air conditioned there, right? And it's, it's dry heat, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't, so. you know, don't give me that shit. You know, it's uh, oh, it's yeah, you, but it's dry heat. Yeah, sure. It's still it's a hundred and fucking fourteen degrees, dry yeah, or wet. Yeah, it's still too hot. But yeah, I'll tell you one thing. You, yeah, no, I was just gonna say you sure as hell wouldn't want it to be one fourteen and humid. I mean, I know people say dry heat, and you're right. It's still too hot. And I know. I lived in New Mexico for five years. Yeah. It's horrible when it's that hot. Gee, why yeah. is uh, why uh, why is uh, uh, Lee, uh, James Lee is trying to call us? And I answered the phone. Can you I, call I, him? Are you you aren't there, are you, James? Huh? No. Yeah, I could call him. Yeah. Well, I can yeah. add to group right. and call on Skype and see if he, if he picks up. Who knows? We'll yeah. see if he picks up. Could be he will. Could be he won't. You know. So, Chris, I was talking to a friend uh, uh, recommending a series on Showtime uh, uh, for one of your compadres in uh, in Las Vegas, Andrew Dice Clay. Uh, do you, do you see him running around, or is he pretty private? He's on a he's on a bit of a, a circuit. He played Big Bear actually. They they had him play the local rock and roll venue. Uh -huh. It seats about three hundred, and they were selling champagne booths. 
I don't think it worked out for everybody. But now they're back just uh, having rock bands and Ted Nugent up there and such. So, mm -hmm. Oh, God. But uh, Dice Clay, I don't know. He might book some, he books some venues in Vegas, but not the big stuff. He has a loyal following. Yeah. 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 So anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, um, is Las Vegas politically conservative? It's a mix of, uh, of all other parts of the country. Uh, it's... It's kind of purple, really, and everyone has a Republican neighbor and everyone has a liberal neighbor, it seems. And in our little district in the Northwest, it's a, there's a lot of horses and there's, there, it has a red flavor up here. Our, our councilwoman, she, she, uh, she takes Christmas pictures with holding guns and her babies are holding guns and she's always arm in arm with uh, Trump and whoever else she can find. So our little district seems to be represented uh, well, by the the red state faction, but uh, I thought we're, we're, we're all out here, you know. I thought that uh, in Las Vegas itself, because there were so many workers uh, that um, you know work in the casinos at mm -hmm. uh, our employees, that it was a very blue area. Yeah, it it is overall. There's it's it's turning into a a purple state, blue state. This is the only state in the country that uh, voted for Bush, Obama, and then Hillary Clinton. It didn't go back after switching to Obama. But both, basically, basically, Vegas is a pro-business place. So mm -hmm. we, we have, we've had Oscar Goodman and his wife as the mayor, and they're, they're very pro-business, pro-casino. But the casino business is probably off about 28% since 2006, but there's still plenty of people coming in spending money uh, and spending less money, but they're still coming in in droves, 28, 29 why, million people a year. Why is the casino so. business off? Yeah, what do you attribute that to? I think I think people have, you know, baseball attendance is off since 2007 a great deal. I think people have less money, and they're they're less likely to spend it on stupid things. Uh, they're less they're a little better at math. They're less likely to overspend on hotel and and everything, and also. Um, they're doing this thing called resort fees. It's a hidden fee when you check into a hotel. And I think that that's horrible. And they charge for parking now. And I think that's going to have a long-term negative. Because when, when, a guy like, when a guy like Phil drops $10,000, he doesn't want to have to wait for the valet to bring his car up. He's going to want a pretty girl to hand him the keys and say, we'll see you tomorrow, right? So, uh, uh, Believe it, me, I don't drop 10 Gs on nothing. <laughs> right. And, and of course, and of course, the shooting, the shooting uh, seems to have scared some people. Too. Well, the worst time I've ever had to spend was uh, five days in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Three days was fine. Five okay. days, forget it. You know. Uh, yeah. Let me see here. Here comes uh, here comes James Lee. Hello, James. Are you there? James. Yeah. Ah, hey, there, on, there, there he is, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. How you doing? Good. How you doing, James? Finally yeah. got to. Sorry. Wipe that volcanic ash out of your uh, eyes, there. Yeah, they used to say wipe the shit <laughs> out of my eyes, so I could catch some fly balls. He's calling. <laughs> uh, he's calling us from Hawaii. We haven't heard from uh, Renee recently, so we don't know whether she's alive or dead. There's a lot of fog blowing around, especially over towards her area. Your eyes water pretty bad out there. Yeah. And of she's on the Makai side, so she's getting it right up there, up above the ocean. Yeah. Oh. That stuff is bad news. So, and, you know, I mean, it scratches your windshield. Uh, you lose your paint job on your vehicle. Uh, that, that ash is really crap. They, you know, so, you they, know that Renee uh, uh, offered a number of times to reach out to you that if you needed to come over to her place, <laughs> especially with your animals, to, to do that. Now it looks like Renee may be going to yours. <laughs> Uh, That's why I'm on the Hamakua side, the, the other side of the island. <laughs> yeah, the west side of the island, uh, uh, I remember when we scouted out the area, uh, they had a vault problem already starting, and <laughs> that's what we, why we didn't move over there. <laughs> Even though it has all the fancy hotels and all the high-income stuff and golf courses. Yeah. You can't play golf if you can't see the place. Wow. Wow. I couldn't play golf even if I could see the place. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, and how, how about politics in your neck of the woods? Uh, is it is it conservative in Hawaii? 
It's all about family, Mr. Bennett. It's all about family in Hawaii. It has nothing to do with whether you're a progressive, liberal, or conservative. Okay, but when uh, you say... Hawaii, we go, we go, you know, remember, we were a territory until 1960. So there are people here yeah. who are still alive who remember when everything came from the territorial governor. Yeah. And to a certain extent, that extends today. Well, all our people that we have in Congress, uh, Brian Schatz, uh, Colleen Hanabusa, all those folks, they're all professional politicians. They're like, uh, the, what do you call it, the, uh, the, the, the little uh, Energizer Bunny. They keep running and running. <laughs> wow. Was that, was that the name before it was, what was, it was governed? That was the name of the territory? Well, it was, it, was, it was the territory of Hawaii until 1960. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, my, my, know, my, and, my, and the governor yeah. was appointed. Uh, but when by you Washington, say it's, it's uh, everything came from Washington, and even though you right, know it right. became a state, who took over the brains of power? All the folks that were all the territorial employees. They had right, the expertise. Right. They had. They lived here yeah. already. They yeah. knew the system. They set up the civil service system. Excuse me, human resources. Pardon me. You know, I mean, they they set up state government, and uh, you know, it's it's all about. Who you know and who? What is? Who's your fan? Who's your daddy, Mr. Bennett? What did your dad do? What did your mom do? What did your aunt do? Well, let's see. Mom was a very, hook, very mom. Important. Mom was a hooker and dad was a dope dealer. Now, how that? <laughs> how would that sit in Hawaii? <laughs> well, that, I was at the Tom well, Tom Lear. I was. What, I, what? You reminded me of the old the Tom Lear, the, the old dope peddler. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Larry. <laughs> Yeah, Tom yeah, Lehrer. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, the reason I ask is, you know, it, 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 we, we, are, we are led to believe, you know, that this country is more conservative and so on than it's ever been. And it really isn't. It's, I, think it's, it's not. I think it's more in the middle. I think it's more so independent than it is anything else. And, and if you're going to yeah. win an election, those are the guy, people you have to go after, not, uh, not your base. You know? Well, uh, the left is starting to go further left with Bernie Sanders and that uh, uh, lady from your uh, from your area, the good-looking uh, one that's a communist. Uh, I forgot her name already. That's the Oh, you mean the, 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 yeah. the one that's running again for, uh, for, yeah. for yeah for Congress? Well, she's a shoo-in, I think. She yeah. uh, she's the uh, her district. Would never uh, vote a Republican. Well, she's and she's a very uh, attractive-looking woman. Extremely and attractive. She's extremely bright. You know, uh, and I think she has all the qualifications for being a a, a congressperson. Um, uh, you may experience performance issues. It says here, high CPU detection. I've had that too, but then I use Viagra. <laughs> So at any p moment, folks, this this program could blow. All right, it blows all the time anyway. But I was going to yeah. say it blows. <laughs> no, I I I, uh, I have a question about uh, speaking of uh, uh, areas in geography. Um, I you know I never researched this or never remembered learning why in New York why is Governor's Island called Governor's Island? I have no idea. I. Neither do I. I it's never even thought about. What Rikers that? Island has uh, got cheap real estate. Yeah, yeah. You uh, can stay there for free. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think Governor's Island had cattle on it at one point in time in the early days, and probably and I, yeah. And I think I think it was government land, even kind of early and. And uh, probably the, the guy that became the governor probably owned it or something. I don't know. Yeah, but I believe yeah. there's under there's a rumor that there are underground driving tubes to get there that uh, only the public doesn't really have access to if they need to uh, get there. And I think that's where Reagan watched the uh, I think that's where they watched the fireworks from and all the Statue of Liberty from. That's 1776. The, yep, and, and 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 just remember it's, it's it, yeah. and just remember it's it's Reagan, it's not Reagan. Reagan, right? Mm -hmm. Is it Reagan and not Reagan? Yes, I've been mispronouncing it for thirty some odd uh, years. Me too. Well, no, I mean that was what they did. That that was you know. No, his Nancy, name. It was you know. originally. Wait a minute. His name was originally Regan. Yeah. And he started pronouncing it Reagan because Regan is Irish. Oh. 
and he didn't. Oh, want that to, was it. Yeah. And he didn't want to yeah. sound ethnic, so he said it's Reagan. Yeah. And that's why he took the name Reagan, because he didn't want to sound Irish, because the Irish were an an anathema or whatever, you know, to to the uh, voting public. Yeah. 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 Was that uh, during his acting days that he uh, adopted the uh, yeah, uh, yeah, different pronunciation? I, I imagine that's what happened, yeah. yeah. Yeah, later, I think later. And I think earlier, because he was Regan, and then I think it was sometime during his acting that it, he changed, yeah, yeah. Well, he changed things all the time, including his political affiliation. That's At right. One time, yeah. At one time, in fact, he was a communist. Yep. You know, and then uh, he turned tail on everybody at the House on American Activities subcommittee hearing, and then he ruined the Screen Actors Guild because his paymasters was the mob. And he was a terrible person. I don't know where this 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 wonderful uh, idolization of uh, I don't either. I don't know. Of well, he got a bum deal he, from the uh, GOP uh, when. Uh, uh, who, who, who won the um, uh, the uh, GOP nomination and Reagan lost a couple of times and uh, I, I guess he, he had had some fights with Rockefeller and, and, a, and a few others that uh, he, he was uh, considered a sort of a fringe uh, candidate and uh, you know What's interesting in Vegas is there's a, a Republican candidate marketing himself as a Ronald Reagan Republican instead of a Donald Trump Republican because I think he feels there's a lot more uh, popularity in that and that distances himself and it helps Republicans uh, get a second wave in case Trump sinks all their votes. You know, you know it's funny that there's a, a, a Blackburn, I, I th Marsha Blackburn, I, I think she's running for, uh, I believe, a Senate a position she was in the Congress, and she has been uh, associating her uh, her ideals with Trump. And at his sorry about that, my window's open. There's a train track like right behind. My... Yeah, <laughs> it's gone. It went through. <laughs> well, you're blind, not deaf. Well, they like to do that in the right. middle of the night to wake <laughs> everybody up, right? Yeah. Well, if you like trains. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm in like a uh, like streetcar named Desire or something, you know. The yeah. Going, but you know. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so what's happening in the news? Anything that's uh, uh, Pompeo was being interviewed today, and he wasn't giving up much. Uh, they kept grilling him about uh, his. Um, uh, what happened in the two hours that uh, Trump met with Putin. Yeah, but and, he wasn't there, so how does he know? Well, he says that he was fully briefed by uh, Trump. And so they uh, they try to ask him what he uh, was told, and he says, hey, it, you know, I'm not going to tell you. It was, you know, it was a, a private Surprise. meeting. <laughs> and, uh, well, well, I wonder who made that a private meeting. You know, one he said party. That there the, was other private meetings uh, between other presidents uh, in the past. No, no, but and, but uh, why in this particular case? I mean, did, who asked for it to be a private meeting? I thought Trump did. Um, and you know, so far it's private. <laughs> you know, nobody has dropped dime on on what uh, what transpired. Or was it Putin that wanted it private? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I guess I Trump. guess when you're going to pull out the P pictures, you uh, you want to make it private. Yeah. Well, they they've determined that all of those the, that 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 whole dossier was bunk. Uh, who? Uh, the um, who decided? The, it was that council that was uh, appointed uh, uh, to investigate. Uh, uh, now nah, I can't remember the guy's name or or what the investigation was. It was called the IGG or. So, uh, IDG. Yeah, but like I think that. they've been uh, called to account too. Is being yeah, yeah. And uh, so anyway, after uh, much investigation, they found out not only was that dossier financed by the DNC, uh, it was uh, also uh, blatantly. Uh, uh, how many lost. here actually, with a show of hands, actually believe that Trump 
got peed on or peed on somebody, would it would just raise your hands? You see, even I, it, it won't work with me, but I, I I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know. I don't know if I think he did. I, I guess I wouldn't be surprised. That's you know, I I, I, yeah. I wouldn't. If he wasn't such a fucking liar about yeah. everything, I I think I could put up with some of this shit. You know. Yeah, I know. But he I lies know. about I... virtually everything, and everybody has gotten to the point where they go, oh, well, that's Trump. Trump lies. Well, wait a minute. Trump is the president of the United States. He is the standard bearer for our country. He is the the moral center of our country. No, he's not. Well, he's, he's, he's never... No, been. no, I don't think so. The president <laughs> has always been expected to have certain moral character that he passes on to the rest of the country. Well, I guess he's like football players now, or or these uh, you know these uh, up and these new athletes. They they don't seem to be the moral compass anymore. Although in the old days, Mickey Mantle probably wasn't either. He was just a drunk. But yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I yeah. always I always love the way they say you know that sports figures were a uh, were an example to the youth, and you know Babe Ruth, hookers and booze. Yeah, you know. Did you see the Ted uh, Williams story on PBS the other night? No, no. that was good. You know, uh, they showed him warts and all. And what did they say about oh, Ted was Williams? That? He was an alcoholic, Ted wasn't Williams, he? No, he was a yeah. great hitter, but yeah. he had a lousy personality. Remember, he used to spit on the fans. Oh, yeah, he would know? spit. Yeah, he, he had was, a beautiful uh, swing. You know, as a lefty, the way he could hit, but he was straight he, up. You know, he never remember he never tipped his hat. And you guys complain about Trump. <laughs> you know, uh, and you know Ted Williams, he he cuss you out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, but Ted Williams was only a baseball player. Trump's the president, for God's sake. You know, come on. <laughs> but um, they're talking about the moral yeah. compass, and I don't think you know it's it's fair <clears throat> that anyone be held to the moral compass anymore because there is no moral compass. Oh, there isn't. There is in no. my life. I live, live by certain moral standards. I think that the people. Uh, well, here, uh, those uh, you have to pick for your own. Uh, your own, that's your own decision. But uh, but looking towards a sports figure or looking towards a current president, uh, mm -hmm. it doesn't that doesn't exist. We might as well just be you know realists and and you know. That's yeah, like I see what you mean in a way. You know, I I think personally we have the moral compass. A lot of us, but you know, but I think. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people just don't care anymore. Well, uh, I'll tell you what we've lost. Okay, the internet has has taken it away from us. Uh, yeah, yeah. In, uh, in in closed cars has taken it away from us. Uh, yep. You know because uh, you know all we have is road rage. Uh, yesterday, some guy uh, is on the BART train and stabs two women, kills an eighteen year old. Didn't even know them. Really? Oh wow. Wow. Well, well uh, station. no, I think what the problem is, and 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 Trump ha is the leader in this, and the, and and it is we have lost any sense of civility on both sides, on everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody feels uh, all, yeah, all yeah. bets are off, and uh, we can do and say anything we want to, and and yeah. he has created that atmosphere. Uh, yep. no, I, I, I don't I, think I, we can blame I, I, him. Asked, I just think he's a mirror. Of that atmosphere that has been that way for a long I'm time. I'm trying to remember who. Oh, I think you're right, but I think he amplifies it. I mean, he instills it in 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 people. He, you know, he he is um, a guiding light, even though he's no guiding light for me. But you know, he represents something. He's so the so if it, if if white trash and Republicans and and things like that uh, are influenced by Trump. What is influencing the people on the other side of the aisle that don't respect Trump, and uh, why are they acting the way that they do? Because it, 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 it. Well, wait a minute, hold on a second. Here, here's uh, I, years ago uh, I interviewed, and I'm trying to remember his name now. He was one of the world's greatest uh, um, uh, historians of, of things. Uh, I'm trying to remember what is what, what is his name. He wrote a book called the elephant man it was about oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and, the and and um he wrote this book and um in fact it's an interesting story uh i had a group of people 
who I, I had him on the show, and I said, God, this would make a great movie. And he said, yeah. I said, uh, uh, give me all your information. Let me see if I can get some people to option this thing. And I got a guy, a guy, a couple of guys together who were biggies in the business. And they said, great story. Let's option it. And they optioned it uh, and peddled it around Hollywood for the better part of two years with me as one of their partners. And no studio would pick it up. Uh. They all turned it down. Well, it turned out that eventually Mel Brooks uh, put the film out with Anthony Hopkins, directed by David Lynch. And it turned out that really the only part of this book that really he owned was his history, his own personal history of what he knew about the situation. The centerpiece in the book were the diaries of the elephant man. So somebody just said, well, we just take the diaries. We don't have to pay for the rights to the book, and we'll make the movie, and that's exactly what happened. But the point yeah. was that what I, I remember in that interview, I said to him, how are mores and how are fashions dictated, for instance, to a society at any given time? And he said, usually by the king or queen who is in power. If he wears big collars, then everybody wears big collars, you know. And I said, well, we don't have that in this country. He said, oh, yes, we do. Our royalty are movie stars, presidents, and so on. And they influence the morality, the, the fashions, and everything else uh, of the times. And that's exactly what happened with, uh, with, with Trump. Because he has lowered the standard of civility, everybody feels it's okay to lower the standard of civility. I always look yeah, at that's, yeah. yeah. like, uh, you remember the story, The Emperor Has No Clothes? You know, sure. yeah. you, you would think that they're setting the standard, but people are just falling in lockstep uh, seeing what isn't there, uh, you know based on the emperor has no clothes uh chris had his hand up and then yeah, um uh, yeah, yeah. james lee and then yeah, yeah. yeah i'm just gonna have to back off right now it's getting a little rainy over here gentlemen so aloha and great chatting with you and knowing you got a good signal with skype coming in here to the islands almost four thousand miles away from you james, guys. we're really glad you're okay it looks like everything's fine well you know we get those 5.3 shakers every morning around three or four in the morning when the holly mama uh, crater tends to collapse and there's a good jolt that we yeah. feel not a rolling jolt it's just a hard jolt for about a split second so you don't need an alarm clock no it, it, it just it, it rocks you on the bed yeah uh, yeah well you know. I'll say i want to say goodbye to your dog too okay yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and we're, we're all checking our insurance policies too <laughs> good. thanks for calling uh, james we enjoy okay, having you on the program yeah, thank when you, you. Call. Right, james. Okay. Take care. james lee's Bye -bye. in hawaii then ladies and Chris, gentlemen and then you had jeff yeah. Uh, first, uh, yeah. Uh, Chris. Yes, Chris. Well, speaking about social mores and how they influence people and politicians, there's a, a theory comedy writers have told to, and uh, 40, sat, I think Saturday marks the 40-year anniversary of Animal House, and I think your friend was behind that, Kenny? Doug Kenny. Yeah. Doug Kenny. And, and if you really look at Animal House, watch it again, uh, there, there seems to, it seems to have inspired a group of the type of politicians we vote for because uh, Donald Trump is kind of like Bluto. He eats like a pig. He's, he, he leers at women. Yeah, yeah, he goes up yeah. the ladder. And we voted, we voted for Trump as a country. And, and at the end of that movie, what happens? He, he drives off with a girl he kind of raped. And he's Senator John Blutarski. You know, that was his coda. And, uh, and then you look at Mitt Romney, and he's kind of an otter. And Bill Clinton fits right in there. And Chris Christie is flounder. And... <laughs> and, uh, I mean, go Damn. down the line. Damn glad to meet you. Uh, who is that one? What? Glad to meet you. Yeah, and John McCain is D Day on the motorcycle, yeah. kind of the badass, and 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 so basically, I think we should blame Doug Kenny for all this. And Republicans tend to get things forty years late, you know. And and back then they were the liberals, and now they're the conservatives. Delta House is now a conservative. It's the new Republicans in a way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, and now the liberals are Dean Wormer and they're all uptight and they're. <laughs> and it's, it's, just, it's gone crazy, flip flopped. So 
Well, you know, how come, how come the liberals seem to always take the side of criminals and miscreants? And uh, Oh, I think know. Republicans do a pretty good job of that as well, don't they? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, the only whoever thing. cuts them a check, they'll cover. So Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's true of any politician. That's why they want, they call it a swamp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, and Donald Trump, they were all born the same summer, the same year. They, it was a, a bumper crop of future presidents. Well, it's, they were formed by the same culture, in a way, you know. Yeah. They're all the same age. The who? Uh, Clinton? Well, Trump, the Clinton, W, w and, oh, and Clinton, okay. They were all born the same summer. Oh, all really? The, wow. Really, all, all the same, same age. age. Wow. Hmm. So, the, huh. really, basically, they're more mores and morality and so on. I mean, we always talk about, oh, what a, what a pussy hound uh, Clinton was, you know. And uh, a lot of that was because of the times. You know, you were allowed yeah, to be a pussy yeah. hound, and you were somewhat expected to be a pussy hound. Jeff, you had your hand up earlier. Yeah, I was going to say that the one thing uh, we haven't mentioned about Trump is the fact that he was a believed millionaire. Billionaire. Billionaire, yeah. And I think a lot of people, be before he became president, right. yeah. was recognized as a billionaire. Millionaire. Yeah, a lot of people were negative on it, but he did a very good job of convincing the world that that he was a very successful guy. His brand. He was building a brand. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of funny because a lot of the New Yorkers mm -hmm. realized what a sleaze ball he was forever. Yeah. He was from Queens. <laughs> you know. Of course. Yeah. And I mean, it wasn't that unusual that somebody who was in the financial business of building and stuff like that mm. were sleazy people. That's not that unique, is it? For no. me. Yeah, you go to bed with dogs, you wake up with fleas. You know? I, I think Trump, basically, if you look at it, he brought New York City-style politics to Washington. Yeah. And New York City is a very international city, and Trump is a very global businessman. And uh, and I think there's the, the the elite people in New York City. They they really want the city to run well, but they they all seem to realize you have to break rules to make the city run well. You have to break the laws that are on the books. And and here you have a guy who prides himself on cutting through red tape. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I think that's part of his appeal to to Republicans. They think this this guy will cut through red tape, even though he's probably giving himself a way too nice a cut of the business, you know. And well, he's not results oriented. He's <laughs> you know he's there for his own poker hall, not for everyone's. But you know, you, you know. say that, but you know, I really I really wonder. You know, it, it, there's so much scrutiny on him. How, what's he taken? You know, well, what, well, I'll, I'll give you a good example. He's building his brand. And, how about, and, how, about and how, how about I the, think his brand's been hurt. How about the fact that his uh, he's building a uh, what a hotel or something, and I I'm trying to remember where like Malaysia or someplace like that, and the Chinese are giving him money for it. Well, he you know he has a corporation. Well, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. Separate he, entity. But, no, it's not a separate entity. Yeah, he, he never divested himself. He never divested himself <laughs> or put all his holdings in a blind trust. And so, therefore, he is still involved in those businesses. But I don't think he's involved in the day-to-day -day decisions. He may not be involved in the day-to-day -day decisions because he has not put it in a blind trust. He is involved. Yes. Now, it's been a tradition to put things in a blind and trust. And the reason not, is so that when you make long. decisions, you don't make them on, if, on your, for your own benefit. Well, I, you know, I, don't, I don't know that the things that he's doing are for his own benefit, like trying to denuclearize the, uh, the uh, North, uh, Korean well, Peninsula. Well, how are we doing uh, on that one? Well, according to Pompeo, uh, they're uh, it, much better than the last two presidents. Well, and, well, much better is that you went across the 38th, 39th parallel, what is it, what's the parallel yeah. there, and, and went and talked to somebody. So well, fucking what? If it doesn't it come starts. to anything, if it doesn't come to anything, uh, it's, you're, it, uh, you're blowing hey, smoke no, up your own ass. That's how it starts. It starts with a conversation. The, the president has already told me 
because I listen on TV and, and he's on there every 10 minutes. And he said, Whoa, man, we solved all of the problems in North Korea already. That the, that, that the meeting and everything was even. absolutely successful, perfect, and, and anything we needed, it's already. In, in the operation right now, they haven't uh, even returned. They haven't true. started to return those bodies yet. Uh, that's that's uh, or remains. Uh, the bodies are since long composed. Yeah. Uh, well, they uh, they uh, returned the uh, prisoners. No, no, that they no, were no, no. Holding. Forget that. Forget that. I'm he, the, the, he guy said yeah, we got a concession. The the South North Koreans are sending back the remains. Of uh, American military, Dead, and yeah. and uh, I mean these bones have got to be fifty years old, right? But uh, uh, so far, Seven. so far, zilch, nothing. You know they said they would, and isn't oh, that oh, 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 a, a oh, real positive oh, step? Yeah. Is that enough? Oh yeah, and wait no. a minute, and no, this is and wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is a government. We, this is a government we should trust. Yes, isn't it amazing how how he trusts he trusts governments that are untrustworthy like the Soviets, like North Korea, and he doesn't give uh, the time of day to our allies who have never done any real harm to us. How about the meeting today between the EU uh, representative and Trump? where they agreed to make a more level playing field, uh, hold off on the tariffs on automobiles, and no, uh, there, there, all, there's been no, a, it's a not really all, positive automobiles movement. Automobiles wasn't part of that. Do you know what the major part of that was? Soybeans. Oh, well, soybeans are important. That's one of our major Yeah, crops. but they didn't say cars. No, no, no. The cars that we were going to put a 25% tariff on European cars coming into the States. And we've agreed to hold off on that. Uh, and they have agreed uh, on soybeans and a number of other things. And then, you know, this, this whole thing is this tariff issue is really a war uh, against unfair trade. And uh, unfortunately, our, the soldiers that are having to fight this are our farmers. And I, I think that the $12 billion that Trump has uh, decided to use to aid those farmers that are in pain uh, while we fight this war is a very, very fair thing. And, uh, you know, I think Trump is doing a very good job when it comes to getting a more level playing field. Why would you not want well, our a more level playing property? field? It, it just cost us $12 billion. Yes, but it's it's eight hundred and thirty billion dollars in trade deficit that uh, that we run every year. So if it costs us twelve billion dollars to straighten out the uh, way you solve this out, problem is deficit. not a trade war, and and look at what it's doing to the farmers in America. Look what it's doing to. I looked at there was a, there is a, a company that makes latches for cars. I think for like uh, Ford or. Chevrolet or whatever makes latches they make them out of metal mm -hmm. because the cost of metal which they have to get from China has gone up 25 percent they've had to let people go off of their com out of their company and they may have to close their doors because of this well and this is there's just a little latch company look at the Europeans uh, they're going to be buying more natural gas from us they're going to be buying the soybeans, and there's a and number you know of other you things that they're doing. going to buy. You're, you're, what you're doing with is, less tariff. Is, is Trump has said, here, here's the Kool-Aid. Drink it, Phil. And Phil is <laughs> just chugging it down. You're, 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 you have blinders on. Okay. Uh, uh, Chris, any comments here? Jeff, any comments? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Phil, I, 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 I don't know what you do. Do you take this with Kool-Aid every morning? Is that the way you egg get Trump Kool-Aid? I use the egg it? salad to get the pills down. <laughs> uh, uh, Chris, comments about this? Well, I was just, it seems that they're, it seems like a Russian economic plan to, to pay farmers for, for not doing something. It just seems like something Putin would do to move money around in his economy. And uh, it basically, it's, let me read this meme I just saw, and I don't. Maybe Phil can break this down for sure. Maybe 
It says a president who knows nothing about economics started a trade war which hurt farmers, so he put them on welfare with money he's borrowing from the countries he started the trade war with. So instead of profiting off the sale of American food to China, like usual, Trump's trade policy has the United States paying interest to China while U.S. farmers become dependent on the government because they aren't selling food to China. Where, so, where uh, did that come from? Uh, that is from, uh, from a source that you would discredit no matter what it is. So, because people, people know you as Shill Myers, as in a way, <laughs> not Phil Myers. So, but, but just break down it without discrediting the source, because it's probably just some fat guy in front of a TV. Tell me what's wrong with that statement and why it's actually capitalism and not some form of socialism that enriches the 1%. Don't, uh, don't we pay our soldiers when they're fighting? Not a lot, but a little. They, they right. basically they well, go for $12 less billion than dollars to aid uh, the pain that the farmers are taking on because we're trying to level the playing field for all American manufacturers so that they can compete competitively in the world market. You know, China manipulates their currency. China does, uh, they, they steal our intellectual property. Mm -hmm. uh, we are at war uh, with uh, many people in a trade, uh, a trade war. And I believe that we need to, if we have to subsidize our farmers so that they, because we can't afford to lose the breadbasket of the United States. So we have to make sure that they stay uh, above water. And uh, so I don't look at it as a re, uh, reallocating money. I look at it as uh, uh, making sure that uh, ensuring that our farmers will be there tomorrow after the uh, the world changes its attitude towards the United States. Who's going to buy the food they're growing now that China is is out of the market? And are we going to start burning crops the way we did during the Great Depression during the Grapes of Wrath? Well, uh, I don't know, but uh, I, I know because that there no are. going to eat all that. Because uh, there's African nations. There are people all over the world that are starving. They could use what it is that we grow. Yes, but they're starving because the dictators hoard the supplies. They're not starving because we don't have enough food. Well, they can't eat all the soybeans. You know, uh, it's you know, if what we have to do is just take this grain that uh, that we might. Uh, instead of burning it just give it to those people that need it and uh, if we have to subsidize the farmers until uh, there's a level playing field eventually uh, the Chinese will want to buy what we have all we're we asking buy it now but we won't let them well they 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 don't let us t uh, sell certain uh, things in their country they also tariff us much much higher to make our goods um, uh, non-competitive and uh, the Europeans are doing it the Chinese are doing it and even the Japanese were doing it now uh, there's been movement with the Europeans just today uh, over natural gas soybeans and a number of other things uh, we've uh, and uh, we've agreed that we'll hold off on these tariffs so maybe the threat of these tariffs have done something positive to uh, to make a more level playing field that's pretty idealistic. We know dictators in Africa, they hoard food supplies and they make millions while people starve. Why isn't this a template that Trump is looking at to make himself richer, even if it hoards food? And Because this is a guy who's already torturing. I, I, I don't know where you're pulling this negative you're, you're, Trump you're, mov you're moving against capitalism. You're, you're, you're moving the invisible hand away from supply and demand and having having bureaucrats and plutocrats run the food but supply the bureaucrats so, so how are you going to make money from that instead of we know trump is but how are you supposed to make money from him screwing with the food and the supply and demand of it you know my business increases when the economy is healthy when the economy is healthy i do very well when the economy is poor like it was in 2008 uh... i i had a really tough time and uh... And and it and it took years to uh, to turn around, and it's just starting to turn around now because the economy is much better than it's been in a long time. So all 
all boats rise in a rising tide and uh, that's what happens in my business and that's what will happen when other businesses are successful because we're not being held back by other countries not being uh, not tr uh, working on a fair and and equitable uh, trade uh, uh, position plus you think this is fair it's oh I think it's very fair mm. I, I think it's fair I think it's unfair of what other countries are doing to us and that by fighting uh, this battle it it will uh, create a more level playing field that will be much fairer and our people will be able to you know the United States will be able to uh, compete against any nation and and sell their goods but as long as you have people manipulating currency, as long as you have people stealing our intellectual property, and as long as you have people uh, uh, not allowing us to sell or making our products uh, non-competitive in their country, and so you can't sell them, uh, you're always going to have an unlevel playing field. So we're taking in all of their products. When, uh, when uh, Chinese sell us an, an automobile, and they don't sell us many, but it's a 2.5% and the same with the Europeans. We had a 2.5% two, two uh, tariff. But the Europeans have a 25% tariff on our automobiles. Is that fair? Why is this better than a boycott of Chinese goods, even though that we know that would crush a lot of investment here and, and a lot of the... If you have a 25% tariff on Chinese goods, that's sort of like a boycott because it makes them less competitive. Isn't and it? what's the historical example of this technique working under previous Republican administrations? Well, you mean like Hoover and... Uh, well, this was a, in the 19th century. We got most of our revenue from tariffs and not from taxes. And we saw what happened there. We saw the great economic depressions of, I think, 1870s and the 1890s that we don't talk about because the 1929 and 30 dwarfed it. But there was a lot of horrible mistakes made back during that tariff culture and I'm not sure this guy understands history and he's only gonna he's gonna pay the the top one percent of the one percent first and everyone else is gonna be left scrambling I, I, I don't you uh, I don't think that you know what Trump says is he doesn't want tariffs he just doesn't want them the other countries to put the tariffs on us take away all the tariffs that's what his goal is they just have a level playing field where there aren't any tariffs but this guy can't make money running a casino phil this is not a guy who does have to do with running the united because states because it's a mentality he's job. playing he's playing poker he's not building bridges with business partners well he is here. about the short-term gain he is not built to to form a consensus or he's not a team builder his cabinet know. is a disaster. Uh, People paid their way into the cabinet. This isn't the best and the brightest. This is nowhere near the Goldwater Republicans. This is nowhere even near W Republicans. Well, this is know, this is a, a poker player who thinks he can he can run an economy the way he didn't run a school. Four and a percent unemployment. There's four, as, uh, at least four or four and a half percent GDP. So uh, then, no one has a right to complain who's a Republican since the unemployment is low. But they're complaining anyway. No, that's not actually the case. There's there, the, the poverty, the amount of income coming into people is really low. The minimum wage is much less than the standard of living proportionally. And you're, you're citing that. The well, you see, I don't rate, believe in a minimum point. wage. Chris, I don't believe in a minimum wage. I believe that ra ra wages will rise as, as demand for workers rise. Should and FDR have gone away with the minimum wage? Was that a bad way to get out of the Depression? Was that a bad step? Uh, yeah, I wasn't crazy about uh, FDR and the WPA and all of those, uh, you know, welfare things. But on the other hand, uh, I guess it worked. Uh, but you know what else worked? World War II. If it mm -hmm. wasn't for World War II, all his uh, all his social programs would have uh, gone in the dumper. We don't you know, know that. But maybe. You know, look, because World War II created a money machine, and it created employment, and it created the Rosie the Riveter, it created uh, a, a robust economy, plus mm -hmm. all the other nations were destroyed by Hitler, and they had to buy from us. They couldn't get it anywhere else. So it was a perfect storm, and it allowed... The Marshall uh, Plan helped out, too, sure. Yeah. we have been joined by Jack Bishop. Hello, Jack. The Marshall Plan helped hey. out the Japanese. Once again, I'm I'm amazed at the delusional world that Phil Meyer lives in. 
<laughs> it's, it's, Jack, it's just too hot in Texas. You're, you're getting fried, and your brain's getting fried. You're damn it's right. And, like I'm, and, I, I'm, and I'm getting fried over the, the delusion that you live under. Yeah, where, how, yeah I, where did you get, I, I, how did you get that way, Phil? You appear to be a relatively intelligent man sometimes. <laughs> He is the friend. He is the, he is the friend I have that I'm embarrassed by. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I understand where he's coming from on this, and I almost half agree, but it's just wrong. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! So if no, he's I wrong, where, what can you agree with? I I just I understand only that. A little bit of the direction that I understand. A little bit of the direction that that Phil, I like. I kind of see why he gets the ideas he does, but I don't think he really stops and thinks things all the way through. That's the problem. I think. Well, Phil, if that makes Phil, any sense, rhetoric. Phil has been very fortunate. He's been extremely fortunate. He yeah. has, yeah. You know, that's all I can say about it. Is he has been, you know, close enough to the American dream to think that it's there, but it's not there. It hasn't been there. For That's right. Years. That's right. I get yeah. up every morning at five a.m. and I go to work. And, and you I, get in your and you get into your Toyota FJ that costs seventy thousand uh, dollars when you 30, bought it. Thirty-five. But you know what? You it for thirty-five, you bought it used. No, now, that's true. I, I bought it in two thousand eleven. <laughs> Well, all right, Phil, look, you were talking about tariffs, yeah. and uh, tariffs are designed to protect your home market. They're designed to protect your home yes. market. And yes, what? and our home market is not being protected uh, at the moment because we're being, uh, we're being inundated by other countries that uh, we're not tariffing, and they're tariffing us. So... To get American products into those other markets, we need to subsidize American products. No, that's the no, welfare no, system no, that Chris no, was no, uh, no, reeling no, against. No. Bullshit, bullshit. It's called playing hardball, and you uh, know it. It's the, it's the, it's what's, the thing. What's wrong but, with uh, eliminate the barriers because and, and compete? On quality. This is the kind. This is the kind. This is the kind of show I love. I don't have to do a fucking thing. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> you expect everybody to play by the rules. Now I'm an old style San Francisco gangster. I say, hey, let's play by the rules that are being played. You're an OG. <laughs> by the way, Chris, Jack, uh, I'll tell you. You know, you know, Jack. You know what I really, really love about you. I mean, you. I just love listening to you. But I'll tell you, you have that. So you have that enthusiasm. I don't know where the hell you get your energy from sometimes. All right. Well, um, you know, nitroglycerin. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't do nitroglycerin. All I got to do is just listen to guys like Phil, and I get cranked. Yeah. Because yeah. you see, they yeah. want to be nice. They want to play by Marcus of Queensberry rules. I'm a street fighter. Let's run. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and where we, look, we sit behind our two great oceans for years after World War II and did not look at consumer goods manufactured in this country being exported. It wasn't a global market as much as okay. it is. It, it, you know, it certainly seemed that way for everybody else out there. What was the mantra of great? You, you want to know? You, you want to know what the problem? You want to know what the problem with Trump is? He went to Wharton School, I believe, but yeah. the class of what? You know, <laughs> and when the whole world was a, was different, and that you learned economics differently. But you know, today if you went to the Wharton School, he'd have to do he'd have to do a catch up course, because he, he you know he was he's still working under old uh, old rules. Where uh, do you uh, pull do, this you, shit you, out of your ass? Would you agree with me, uh, Chris? That, mm -hmm. that you know that he was taught at a, it's kind of like going to a doctor who's like eighty years old and he's still trying to kind of do you things. Know, he's I not up on the latest the medicine. Alex, the laws of economics are very, very simple, no, and they no, no. When when it goes from being years. when it goes from being national 
to international when well, it comes it to being a, a bigger he market. knows nothing about global economy it's just a bigger market you know you got a guy that sells spears and you got a hunter that needs spears and if you make a better spear he's going to buy your spear instead of the other guys that's that's what it's all about oh, it's, that simple, it's, huh? it's ironic you know trump trump got elected in part because he was going to slash regulations on middle-class business people and small businesses and yet internationally he's just slapping regulation after regulation onto the trade no, and, and, but there's a way to make money on both sides of that phil you don't see the whole story you're so worried about the minutiae wait, 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 phil phil phil, you know, phil the money you, off of just, something wait, wait, that, that phil, you're phil, phil that's phil. his motive that's, just that's, look that's, wait a minute hold on a second just look at oh, look he's, a, he's a philanthropist look at what's happening what is his motive? Look, look at what's happening out there phil you have people who are saying, hey, I'm not able to sell my soybeans. Hey, I'm not able to make these latches it's for the cars. Wait, to listen to me because I don't because and I may have to close my company down because of this whole tariff war. And then you have these uh, these farmers who are going to get 12 billion dollars to bail them out. That's a, from it all from a good policy and from good just fin the fiscal sky thinking. Is falling, the sky is falling. Well, yes, it is, called, Phil. Called. The sky is fucking falling, and you better get yourself an umbrella. You and when me, the sky is falling, shit is your given best me umbrella. No reason to believe that the sky is falling, uh, but Trump has given me plenty of reason to believe that he's he's negotiating a much better deal with these who, other countries. Who is it going to benefit? You it's going to benefit the American worker. No, it's not. The American <laughs> worker has not benefited. Since the 1970s. And and whose fault is that? It's not Trump's. It's fault of guys like you and guys like me not hey. pushing our politicians hey. to do the right damn thing. Well, for that's yesterday's news, Jack. Yesterday's hey. news. That's today's news. It's tomorrow's news, too. And he's yeah. working, he's working, you know, to begin with, anybody who had a notion that Donald Trump was a good businessman is out of their fucking minds. He yeah, was a exactly. laughable businessman. Stuff. Here in New York, they laughed at him as a businessman. Well, he you couldn't know, get anything yeah. to work. You know, hey, he, Meyer, Phil Meyer, those, if you want the guy, the guy, the, the guy's almost almost illiterate. The guy can't even friggin' read hardly. Well, 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 well let's he's able to communicate with the masses. masses. He got elected president. Well, hey, you know the masses in this country has about a sixth grade education. Well, yep. then he then he finally spoke to the people the way they needed to be spoken to. And the globe in, in a way that they could understand. Our global trading partners have some of the highest rates of college graduated people in the you know in comparison to us. You know what the literacy rate in a two bit country like Costa Rica is? Uh, on, I'm Phil. sure it's very high. Phil Yee, oh, well, take a number. Be bold. Pick a number. I have no idea what it is. I, I it's, would imagine it's like It's 95%. You know what our literacy rate in this country is? Last time I checked, it was about 75%. Yes, but if our literacy rate was based on uh, speaking Spanish, it would be higher. Oh, Phil, <laughs> that is another <laughs> art. How about if you spoke Yiddish? Do you speak Yiddish? A little. All right, good. What and do you mean a little? a little? Two words. <laughs> what? Little bit of and, and I hope now, one of them is schmuck, because that's what I'm going to call you tonight. If I cock them. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, you got to call me a schmuck? No, no he, was ta he was referencing me. No, I was referencing him. Yeah. Schmuck be an upgrade for Phil. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, listen, uh, <laughs> you got to go do a show, right? Uh, oh, please, don't tell me that. Let me get rid of you right now so you can go do your fun. show. Jack Bye. Bishop is Bye. next with The Intersection. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, meanwhile, uh, I, I guess uh, nothing blew and everything worked with this new equipment and so on. And uh, I want to thank everybody that called uh, 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 tonight uh, to make, uh, let me try it out. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much. Uh, Chris, you got to call more often. You're terrific, man. You are just the best. Uh, and of course, Phil, you're an asshole. And... Uh, uh, Steve, uh, nice, uh, nice having you here. Hey, why doesn't everybody wave a, a big uh, goodbye and uh, yeah, and, and say goodbye to our audience? Uh, do that. Yeah, yeah, that's enthusiastically. Come on. All right, there they go. Okay. Uh, yes. All right. 
That's our uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Let me hang up on him, get the line cleared for Jack so he can use it. Uh, I'll uh, be back again uh, tomorrow night. Uh, but uh, at, uh, what is it? Um, next is the intersection. Then right after that, you have um, connections. Then tomorrow night at 9.30, it's Damian Chaplin with The Exchange. I'll be back again tomorrow night. Same time. Same station as li in life, as I like to always say. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? <laughs>